It's Catch 22 Radio on GMTRadio.com. Yeah, baby, yeah, 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 we back. You know what it is, Catch 22 Radio Show. We have a very special guest in the building. Now our next guest is one of Houston's hottest artists. Oh, man. One of the best rappers I done heard of in a long time. You know what I'm saying? He has a new, the forefront. Like, let's be real. He has a new album out entitled King Beezy that is available now. And y'all better go stream it because it's hot. We was listening to it on the way home. Yeah, I already liked it. Yeah. No, Beezy is in the building. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Hey, what's going on? Man, we excited to have you. We've been trying to get you for a while. You came and blessed us with a performance on our one year anniversary. It was so great. I had a lot of fun that day. Uh, <laughs> well, what's been going on with you? Man, I've just been grinding, man. We dropped the album King BZ uh, about a month ago. And uh, we're just mashing, man. Trying to make sure we get this tour put in place right so we can get this road and get these seeds outside the city I'm supposed to. All right, so with the album, you have a dope concept for the listening party. Um, I like the the way that you invite the who's a who, you know what I mean? I watched uh, Slim Thug open up his invitation right. uh, on, on social media. What made you think about like a silent listening party? Uh, just to do something different, man. I kind of feel like uh, a lot of work been put in on my end as far as uh, locally. And it's just not too much more that they can be done in the city. It's kind of like a pencil. So now I'm at the point where I want to create different things, create, create different, uh, I'm trying to figure out the best way to say it, but just create new, unique, unique ways to do things that we're going to do with it. It's the same thing. Because everybody got the album release parties where they invite the couple rappers in the city, you know what I'm saying? That type of thing. It's just nothing really different that, that can be done for someone like me, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I've had a pretty much strong buzz since like 2012 for the right. stack. So it's like, Creating different creative ways just to, to do the same things here. Like I said, we plant seeds outside of the city, but we're gonna do something here. We gotta, take, we gotta raise the bar and create that. Yeah, I mean, you've been buzzing for a minute. I was telling them that uh, I've been following you since SF2, mm-hmm. Kickback Sunday, yeah. when he was freestyling, and I I just so happened to miss the fast switching like, video shoot. Like, oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I've been following him for a minute, you know what I mean? So to say that you are here in like New Houston and old Houston rocks with you, you know, like how do how did you bridge that gap? Because there's a lot of new artists in Houston that old Houston don't rock with, but you're that you're that artist that hey, like if you move, we move. Right, right. Now, I mean, I think just early on, man, uh, making sure my character was solid. You know what I'm saying, like. A lot of these OGs, man, when I reached out to them, I either get a phone number or when I see them, I approach them and just give them my thanks for opening the doors for, you know, somebody like me and just paying my respect, you know what I'm saying? I think my character, I think the people can vouch for your character, they have no problem riding with you, with your music, anything else, you know what I'm So, just when I first started jumping off, you know, my name was buzzing, when I would approach these OGs, man, I wouldn't ask for a feature or anything, I'd tell them that the thing was first, that's what it was, right. they build relationships with you as far as, you know, asking for your music. So, Right, so how did the link up with Killer Kelly on happen? Cause see my job was going to talk. Man, it's crazy. Uh, he was my favorite. He's he my favorite rapper. Just you know, Texas period. And uh, when I started getting my bud, like you said, it was at SF two. So um, Killer actually walked in. Like how it was was you'll do little ciphers in between the performances, and the best person I used cipher would go on to the end. Kind of like we do next time rap battle. And uh. You know, I would always make it to the end, and that's when people would come see. So Killer walked in one time, and they made him judge between me and my fucking K-Dog. So he kept making this go again, like, nah, nah, go again, go again. So after like the third, fourth time, I just walked in this nigga's face and started racking towards him. You know what I'm saying? I had made an impression, and coincidentally, like three, four days later, I was at another event rapper. His assistant was there, and she was like, man, me and Killer about to do this, woo, woo, woo. So I was like, man, shit, I actually just met the nigga. She was like, man, then you was who he was talking about. So she told me he was talking about him. And just within a month, I just kept running into this nigga in the parking lots and just near around the thing. And then we just built a relationship from there. You know what I'm saying? He respected the way I rap. You know, vice versa. Just, just, Yo, I agree. I feel like y'all two are the most beautiful dudes I've ever seen. So I appreciate it. That's crazy. Yeah. So speaking about something that you did, cranked up with you from Rap Battle. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, what what fueled you to to actually build that platform for other people to, to be able to rap and get this Man, I think it was just more so feeling like there was no lane for for like 
Liverpool market, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. or, um, in Houston, I just wanted to create a platform because we sit here and wait for something to happen that's not gonna happen, you know right. what I'm saying? So um, that's just where, like I, I keep saying, I don't wanna sound like no broken record, but we at a point now, so we have to create different opportunities and create yeah. unique things because it's just a hamster wheel right, wheel right now. And it all started with DJ Exo had had given the uh, H-Town beat battle. We was like, right. that was going viral. But, um, you know, two parties ended up kind of getting into it. It was about to take a thing and turn it. It was just the energy in the city that everybody was feeling. So I wanted to make sure I kept the energy and we started the hashtag H-Town rap battle mm -hmm. and uh, ended up turning it into a big you know, we had nothing. That's right. So, so with the folk law of the city, man, like what is it that the city can do to actually embrace everybody? Like what what is it new that we need out here to actually help independent artists and guys like yourself to get on? Man, um, I honestly don't know the thing. I think one thing we need to realize is, uh, you know, people always say we need to be like Atlanta, we need to be like LA, man, but there's a difference between those cities and these cities. Mm -hmm. This city is a music scene, no cities are music industry. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And the best example I can give is like, you'll have somebody to sell out the most monumental place in Texas, uh, Warehouse Live, Drake, Kendrick, all these, I've seen every single one of these niggas be at these venues with like 50 people come around and next year and sell that bitch out, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I say all that to say, a nigga from Houston can sell that bitch out and gotta be at work at night in the morning, you know what I'm saying? And that, that's all you gonna hear about it. But LA or in New York, you know, SOBs or House of Blues in LA, something like that, you sell that bitch out by yourself independently, no help. Shit, a mile or two up the street, they is Def Jam or uh, Capital or something, they gonna be talking about this shit, man. You hear about it, such and such? Who sold our warehouse live with no deal or nothing? Who was that? Well, let's look into them. You feel what I'm saying? It's kind of like a, it's like a like a step by step thing. Yeah, but here it's just like you can only do so much. You can sell out shows. You can have fans walk up to you in, in the gas stations. You can tour, do whatever, and still gotta be at work at eight thirty in the morning. You know right. what I'm saying? With no results. So I think that's the difference here. And uh, I think. Uh, Taste makers here, like just like what he did uh when Yo Gotti got down here. I don't know if y'all follow Bass Life, but you got to see him called Dog Ass and Yo Gotti was here. He was walking out the show and Kiyadi was like, hey man, we got a young nigga by the name of Fast Life. Just that little you know, sitting right there. Then he was like, man, shoot it to me. Later that night, Kiyadi, I mean, Yo Gotti on his Instagram, jamming dog ass, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's just, it's just a, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like it's a system, that word of mouth system of, of, of the taste maker saying, hey, this, that nigga. Yeah, it's it's so. one of the, cause it, it, it's a whole bunch of us that's blood. Yeah, for sure. It ain't gotta be dope easy, you know what I'm saying? But for me to look online and see that someone of power, like, uh, like Kiati, is gonna throw an alley like that, like, that, I feel like that's, that's, that's one of the things. So that I, 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 I think you, you said it, but you, you just didn't say it. Like, you didn't say it, but you right. said it. Because, um, I feel like it is more of the people who hold the power of position right. making those things happen. And I think that's the difference between you saying Atlanta is an industry and we're seen. Right. Because the ones that hold that power, we, we gravitate to our new sound. Exactly. We gravitate to our new artists. So now we got to pull them up because they're a product of our music. Like everybody that's on the scene now are a product of SUC, right. Switch the House. Like right. they're a product of our music. So let's, let's pull them up. So. How do you feel about like Houston radio not really rotating Houston music? Like not in the nineties, you know, in the nineties, like I knew all them songs because it was on the radio. The radio. Right. Yeah. Now it's kinda like, ah, like we're gonna play the top forties, that's it. Right, right. Um I definitely feel like it will it will be beneficial if they did get behind the artists. I think that's one of the things we're missing. If they did get behind the artists that was actually building a buzz, like they didn't have to build the artist. They didn't have to force the music on them, but again, like a dog ass or, or something like that, you know, that nature, you know, the out behind tech, you feel what I'm saying? Something that's gaining traction without them, I think they should be able to jump behind it. And the more artists that they do that, the more revenue that's gonna come here, whether it's uh, people booking features, whether it's people coming down here and shooting videos, whatever, it's just more revenue being, being drawn to the city. But at the end of the day, I want to make it clear, it's not we. No artist should be dependent on that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Especially in 2018, I ain't hear Trippy Red on that one uh, radio station. I ain't heard XXX Connection, whatever that nigga name is. <laughs> yeah, I ain't heard him. I ain't heard none of these. Max Soul's not on the radio right now. Trill, Dice Soul, none of these niggas is on the radio and, and they moving right now. So I do want to let it be known that I think it'll be beneficial, but none of us should be repeated. Right. I mean, I. I, I 
I feel like if the if the city will gravitate to somebody, right? You know what I mean? Like I think that's the difference between like older Houston and new Houston. Like right. now everybody's a rapper, so it's like I can't really like post him or beat him up because it's kind of like I want to be I want to be else. Yeah. But as in like if you think about the '90s, like and the whole city was behind SUC. Right. So it's like okay, we're gonna build that buzz. So whether you you make it out of the city or not, guess what? You already you don't have to work that nine to five right. because you're gonna sell our shows here. Exactly. You know what I exactly. mean? So you can be rich just in Texas, not leaving Texas. You oh yeah, for rich. sure. Definitely. For sure. Definitely. So based on the project, because the project is dope. Um, I heard a lot of different variations from you being a lyrical rapper. Um, uh, the song with Kenny Manny B Key. Yes, sir. Uh, you performed at our one year anniversary, and I was like, "That's different. That's that's not no easy for me." Right. You know what I mean? So, what made you go that way with making that record? Um, I don't know. I just I, I always had like a little playful side with the music. You know what I'm saying? When I like to just go in there and fool around, and I just did the hook and the verse. And, you know, I had been wanting to work with Ken, but I just wanted to find the right record. I also didn't want to hear the Ken and Big King on the record. You know what I'm saying? So anybody that's been following me know that shit. Whenever I do a club record, I know how that goes. Uh, you know, so sure. that was automatic. But uh, shit, I feel like that was just a record for getting the beer. So how did you end up being kids? Uh, I think I just started seeing her on the internet. My assistant, the lady I told you about Killer at first, uh, she she be um, way ahead of music, like know about people a year before everybody else do. So she she been telling me about playing the men. So when I looked into her, start seeing her visuals, the way that she carries herself. And then uh, I had went on tour, and she ended up opening up one of the cities. So I was like, yeah, I fuck with her. She's super tough. So, you know, I just like to get behind anybody that's organic and grown in the city. You know, really, 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 really. She, she dope as fuck. Anybody that see that says she's dope. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's one of my favorite songs on Apple. Yeah. <laughs> 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 now, don't be, you got a lot of performances coming up, so it's only right. Um, <laughs> out of group. Oh, yeah, I'm saying. Uh, name of the group is Thick and Nasty. Thick and Nasty. Thick and okay. Nasty. Uh, we are Thick and Nasty. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We both. Don't separate. That Juicy, you gotta explain who Thick and Nasty is. Alright, so saying that you are a lyrical rapper, uh -huh. you're, gonna need, you're gonna need something different. Yeah. Um, so we're background rappers. Okay. Now, look, I know what you're thinking. Like, they hype me and they're gonna be <laughs> rapping my legs. No. It's not no. what I'm doing. Yeah. What I'm doing is I'm rapping my own verse while you rapping your verse, and it's gonna intertwine together. That's it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be different. You know what I mean? You're talking about something different for the city. <laughs> <laughs> Just think about Floji. Oh boy, So you know what I mean? If you want to take it to another level, yeah, you know I'm saying we, you got yeah. background rappers. Man, let me know. I'll shoot me a link or something. <laughs> 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 You had a test run. <laughs> <laughs> now, with the King BZ album that you have out now that is available on all streaming outlets, what was the motivation behind this album? Oh, uh, just feeling like, man, we got I gotta claim my spot, man. I've been out here for a long time. Uh, I feel like I'm slowly making that transition into OG. I don't think I'm there yet, you know what I'm saying? But I definitely feel like we in that gray area, like you were saying, like New Houston, you know, turn it up. Like that, so I man, I just feel like man, you gotta act like a king, you treat it like a king, and that's and that's what I'm on, man. For the, rest, for the rest of my career, the rest of my life, man. I'm gonna do the boy shit, um, even with the music. I'm still with the punch lines and the wooden flow, but I'm sure you know, you know George can grow. You know, you know, just as a man, as an artist, just as a man. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I mean the, the difference between past switching and F R B is definitely yeah. I mean, a different. So I mean, everybody know hard cap. Um, I think it's probably the first song that I've actually heard rap about. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I'm not gonna ask you what the inspiration, but what do you feel like the impact could be behind that song? I feel like it's huge, man. I, I tell the story every time somebody asks about it, man. I, I, when I do music, like, before I release this shit, I send it to my manager and my assistant in one group text, and to my barber and one of my best friends in another group text. So, uh, my assistant in my barber was like, man, don't put that on the album. He was like, man, it's cool, but, you know, Harvey already happened, and then you put it out with Harvey, it's just, it's all right, you know what I'm saying? Like, am I tripping? Like, this so hard, you know? So, uh, I ended up going with my gut and putting it on there, bro, and just the response to it, like, everybody loved it, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, 
everybody look, I'm just glad I moved my foot, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like it's a timeless song, even yeah. 10 years from now, when you, when you hear that song, it's gonna take you to a place where you remember you was at the crib, and, you know, you, your street may not have been flooded, but shit, you can't go around the corner to right. the corner store to even get right. no cigars, because it's flooded, or if you were flooded, you know, whatever it is, it's gonna always take you back to a time where you won't never forget, no matter if you hear it now or 10 years from now. Yeah, I mean, I, just because it, it already happened, I don't think that you shouldn't put it out. Like, because I haven't heard the song about it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it was a lot of songs about Katrina. And it, was a, it was a devastating time. Like, it, it, was, was. it wasn't something that you, you could just look past because it's a lot of lo lives lost. It was a lot of cars lost. It was a lot of homes lost. He wanted to be dope. Just literally have, like, records. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I think it will be... Cause I think he gonna push a pin. Like you exactly. know, you gonna have to go. I was asked exactly what I was saying. I think I think he gonna put me in a place where I didn't even know that I could go. You right. know what I'm saying? So that's that's one thing I admire about Faith. Why I won't work with him. Story I ain't really never told nobody. I need audition down. So one day I did call Faith for a verse. This nigga totally left talking about something totally different. So we talking. This nigga calls George Clinton on three way right now. Oh, really? Wow. And man, did not answer the phone, bro. I was so Yeah. Uh, voice my everything popped up. <laughs> and that even we, whether him answering or not, bro, just being on the phone was so far away. Yeah. And then he calls George Clinton on three way, bro. Like, nigga, I ain't even need myself today. Right. I appreciate the jewels, the game, everything you dropped, man. Yeah, appreciate crazy. you, buddy. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, uh, but I know it's down to happen because even after that, a year or two later, they had a show in uh, Arizona. And, uh, we just crossed paths in the hotel lobby. We just stopped. It was like, bro, jam it. You know what I'm saying? He said his promoter just put him on my music and shit. And he jammed it. So, time is in Alright, so we're gonna see that exclusive. <laughs> show, yeah, so we're gonna up, but y'all see it on the snap, cause you know me, I'm gonna <laughs> Yeah, I chill. Uh, <laughs> in the A. The DM, baby. Soon as the mix is mad. We need it. Alright, y'all. So what we're about to do is gonna go ahead and get into work some by Dope Easy feature Kid Man and B King. And yep. when we come back. We got some more talk Dope Easy bags. I got questions myself. Let's get it. But it's going down. Let's get it. Easy. And they were going out. I like the conversation. See, I like the music conversation because I like to hear the people that's in there. Yeah, right. I don't care about the people that's trying to get in there because, you know, I don't really know what you're doing. Right. But the people that's in there, I want to know what you think about it. Yeah, so sure. we were talking about the tastemakers. We were talking about Atlanta. We were talking about how we feel like they stick together and we feel like they're moving together. Now, what do you think is the key? to a successful artist out of Houston. Man, the key for me, I feel like there's no right way to do things. There's no right or wrong way to do things. But the one thing that I do feel like is what works the most is when you go outside your market and you build relationships, you play scenes with people, and uh, whether it's you know certain tastemakers in other cities or whether it's uh, building a fan base by opening up for other niggas and other cities, things like that, that you can seeds in different markets and then making sure you continue to water those seeds, you're making your rounds and watering those seeds. You know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like though, that's one of the biggest things that you can do to try to be a successful artist out of Houston. Because if you do it just in Houston, you're only going to get to a certain point and you're going to find yourself doing the same thing over and over and over. Right? So I do have a question. Yes, sir. You know, you've been an artist and us being a out there. Um, what I what I've come to find is a lot of people are cloud chasing. Right. Whereas yes. in um you being an artist or me being a media outlet, I don't want to come to your radio show because you're not slave or you're right. not the breakfast club. Right. So um I think what it's gonna take is gonna take the artist understanding that we have a media outlet here mm -hmm. and the art and the media outlet media out there understanding that we have artists here right. and we all come together and we all push together because I was like Sway wasn't Sway 20 years ago right like he was all you know what I mean they've been doing been doing interviews been doing music but like I found that it's a lot of like oh uh, I'll get back to you when I got time right you know what I mean and I don't feel like it's like we with us being the four biggest city like there should be no reason you have to leave Houston to get a clout interview Right. Or to get a cop artist because it's a lot of dope individuals here. Right. So, what do you feel like that fine line is? Like, I know, you know what I mean, there's a lot of people that say they do interviews, there's a lot of people that say they do music, and it's like, eh, I'm trying to find that talent. Right. You know what I mean? Like, so, how do you pick and choose where you want to do an interview? Um, 
man, to be honest, I do I do interviews everywhere. Any anybody, whether you big or small, just because of you know, like you said, you know, I, I don't want to be the person that twenty years from now, like, oh, nigga, you ain't wouldn't fuck with us when we started from the bottom. I feel right. like you know, everybody counts. That's one of my slogans that everybody counts. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but I I can't say I don't understand where it's coming from. I understand what they're saying. You know, when people do act like that, pretty much it's the audience. I mean, you come to whoever's radio show, if it's a one line radio show or whatever, it's the, you know, nine times out of ten, that audience ain't gonna be as broad as they swear in the morning. You know when you're gonna swear in the morning. And then, let's say if I if I, if I post a flyer from Pitch 22 and then I post one flyer, more people are gonna be more aware of sweat. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, for sure. Right. And that's, that's you just being perfectly honest. Yeah, you know that's all enough. So, but I think artists be, be so. Like you said, cloud chasing or chasing that fan, they're not even worried about the interview. They want to just be able to post a day on the radio or right. sway. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's where that comes from. You know yeah, but, but but that's, I guess that's that's I guess that's my 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 I guess my my question about it because like the sway, I've seen a lot of people on sway. Right. But if you ain't big enough, you're not posting you know what. Right. You know what I mean? So you can say you was on sway, but, but you're only doing it to your own. That's audience. what I'm saying. So if he, if he's not promoting that you're gonna be on the show, it does what? Whereas in if you get with Catch 22, and if Dope Easy push Catch 22, and I'm pushing Dope Easy, then we all it's work. Just, nah, that, that's mean? definitely, I mean, that's definitely a fact, bro. It's just all a perception thing. Yeah, that's that's so all, at the end of the day, it's all a perception thing. I'm smart enough and wise enough to know, you know what I'm saying? But nine out of 10 rappers, they just want to be seen, bro. Like, yeah. these niggas don't, don't know the ins and outs, don't know the business, don't know the part of building relationship things that bro. They just want to be able to say they don't give a fuck if Sway do post that up. But if they got if they gonna be on Sway and they know that they got a flyer that can say they gonna be on Sway, bro, them posting that bitch and shit refreshing that thing every five minutes to see how many likes they got, that's what they doing it for. They get more value to them out of that than actually going on there and maximizing out on that opportunity. So that's what it is, bro. Like it's no secret. That's it, it, it. It's no secret, that's what it is. A lot of these, like you said, are all clout chase or just uh, happy with the perception. You know what I'm saying? A lot of niggas will go broke trying to look rich. That's right, that's good. Good. And that applies to every other, every aspect, whether it's money or not. You know what I'm saying? Most rich niggas will burn to look rich. You'll burn a bridge with Kiss 22 to look Man, good. that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. That's crazy. I agree. Yeah. I agree totally. So don't speak on we like the support too, bro. So any shows, anything, let us know, man. We out there, bro. We trying to grow this to give views in that platform for up and coming artists. Yeah. We trying to reach out to the OGs. Some of them have been up here, and some of them we, we tell them, tell killer, come on up here, man. We gonna talk to them. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we reaching out just just to build that platform here for the city, man, because we need it. You know what I'm saying? For everybody to be able to have somewhere to know that they don't have to go to LA or they don't have to go to New York or Atlanta, but you can stay right here in Houston or go come into Houston and talk yeah, about yeah. something else up here, man. Yep, because there's a lot of uh, interviews that uh Burks Club do that they not promote. For they sure. don't put they don't put the video out, but they support a lot of local I mean New York artists. Right? Oh, yeah, for you sure. know what I mean? Like they grabbing them like it's the same thing. Like if you don't be like we Breakfast Club is cool. Because you know what I mean, they're breakfast club, but they're the voice of the east. You know what I mean? And up north, they don't sound like us. Right. right. You know what I mean? You need a southern radio station that's gonna sound like you, gonna talk, talk like us. They're yeah. not gonna say, no, hey, talk, what you said? What did you say? Talk, talk, talk about, about what is it talking about? Three <laughs> 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 words together. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you like, definitely need somebody that can speak the same language as you, bro. Just gotta keep building. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Keep building. Just find a way to put your arms around me and raise the bar, bro. And separate yourself from everybody else, bro. Yeah. You so when we bring it back to Houston right now? Man, the plan was to have it done by April 1st, man. Right? But shit, doing the, doing the album and just having my hands full, I felt like I wasn't able to give my full attention like I did the first season. And uh, to be honest, we don't have an official date right now, but the goal is the next month or two. Everything's already set in place. Everyone is just waiting for me to push the button to say go. You know what I'm saying? From staff to the venue owner, everybody just waiting on me to say go. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to make sure that I'm able to give it the full attention that it needs. But it's something that's very special for the city. I feel like yeah. it's something that can be super huge. You know what I'm saying? Well, whatever we can do to help push the culture and push that, 
Yeah, that's what y'all doing, bro. Using y'all voice and y'all platform, bro. Making people aware of your shit. If somebody went there, we can invite them to the show. Something, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, man, be, being an extra voice and, and being genuine, I can tell y'all genuine people who care for the city. That's what it was built on, bro. Like, how y'all saying, like, you shouldn't have to leave this and that. And I, I, you can go back to the last year, man. I actually made a post before it was even an event, man. The whole purpose of it was to use our voice and, and help each other, you know what I'm saying? Be united, like, Slim Thug was the freestyle on his phone and you click the hashtag and you go to all the hashtags right next to Slim Thug is Joe Blow rapping. You never know what you know he used to be yeah. rapping. You know what I'm saying? So the whole point was to was to was to build a platform for those who don't really necessarily have the voice was look out the talent to be up there with Slim Thug on the floor. You know what I'm saying? So, same same shit y'all working on, that's what I'm trying to work on, bro. Is the, Building a platform for niggas without a voice, but actually got the talent. Then I got the bread to pay the play, but you know, you got the talent. That's why I'm, that's what I'm focused on trying. Even if I don't make it, make sure I do my part to make sure somebody from this bitch gets the third of the world. I feel it. I feel it a lot. And uh, Big and Nasty will be on the next record. Nasty in there, baby. We're going to be behind the people that's up there. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, what's next with Dope Easy? What you got coming up? Man, uh, working on my next album, I ain't talking to Texas, man, I all produced by Pug Team. Uh, we got it from I don't know if y'all uh, heard of Lilo's Nice at the International Ballroom. To me, feel like the most genuine type of the city in years, bro. So he produced this whole type, he's doing my whole next one. He like to do like theme, I'm like theme uh, projects. So, man, I'm, I'm excited about that one. So, we heard it, man, so. Oh, we got something going on today too. Tell them about that. Oh yeah, yeah, man. Uh, you know, uh, crawfish charity, charity event, man. Come through. All you can eat crawfish, man. Pay a little, little fee, man, just to get in there, and then all proceeds, one hundred, one hundred percent proceeds, go back to charity, man. So, yeah, I got something got nothing to do, man. Come through, man. Two years later. I like crawfish. Hey, they got other food too. If you don't want to fuck with crawfish, <laughs> you know, I'm different. My dog is allergic to crawfish. Yeah. <laughs> I'm there for the crowd yeah, just so you know that. <laughs> So where can they find you on social media, Dope Easy? Man, anything with a search engine, man, Dope Easy. D-O-U-G-H-E-E-E-Z-Y. And if you uh, still flesh stones on Snapchat, man, King B, King Easy Baby. K-I-N-G-B-Z Baby. Yes, sir. Hey, what's the flesh stones? Everybody fucking Snapchat. Everybody, everybody. All right, well, thank you so much for stopping by and talking to us. Make sure y'all cop that King Busy. It is out now. Make sure y'all support. And it's going down. We're about to go into a mix, and when we come back, I want to talk sports. So it's Catch 22 Radio Show. Yes, sir. It's Catch 22 Radio every Sunday from 3 to 5 p.m. on GMTRadio.com.